Hello everyone, welcome back to Cyber Platter. In this video, we'll explore the concept of single sign-on, how it functions, and the advantages and disadvantages. So what exactly is single sign-on? As we discussed in our previous videos, single sign-on enables users to authenticate just once using a single set of credentials and granting them access to multiple applications and systems without needing to log in again. This means that after logging into one application, users are not required to log in again and again when accessing other applications. Let's demonstrate how single sign-on works with Google applications. You might have noticed this before, but you might have not realized that it is single sign-on. Allow me to explain. In this example, if I try to access Gmail and click on sign in, I get a login page. On the login screen, when I enter my username, in Gmail, you can enter either user ID at gmail.com or just user ID. Either one works. So I entered my user ID and then Google prompted me to enter my password. Once I enter my password and click sign in, it redirected me to Gmail page. And in the new tab, if I access Google Photos, you see on the top right, I am logged in as my Gmail ID, whatever the ID I entered in Gmail. Right. So now let me log into YouTube. You see in YouTube also, I already logged in with the same user ID. Right. So I logged into Gmail once and the subsequent logins are not required. So let me log out and log back into log back into YouTube first. So you see um, when I access to YouTube, I got sign in and now Google is asking me to select my ID and when I selected it asked me for password once I enter it took me to YouTube page with my account or logged in so now on a new tab I'm accessing Gmail now you see I did not enter any ID and password I logged into Gmail now on an, another tab I'm accessing Google Photos and Google Photos also logged me in directly without asking any ID and password. So I'm just signing out from all the applications. And now what I do, I'm going to Google Photos, but I am not logging into Google Photos yet. And a new tab, I'm opening Gmail application. So you see, because I haven't logged in yet, Gmail also asks um gave me a login page now i'm doing the same thing with youtube youtube also showing sign in button so now i'm going back to my google photos and logging in and then when i go to gmail tab and refreshes it it logged me in directly because i logged into um, google and the same thing with youtube so this is how single sign-on works. You log into one application and the subsequent logins to other applications are not required as we just saw with Google Photos, YouTube and Gmail. Now let's discuss some advantages and disadvantages of single sign-on. One of the major advantage is single sign-on eliminates the need to remember multiple usernames and passwords where you can use single set of credentials to access multiple applications. This makes it very convenient and it reduces the risk of forgetting passwords. When you have multiple user IDs and passwords, users often write down those passwords um, insecurely or when they forget those passwords, they may need to contact help desk. 
to reset those passwords. But if we have one password, very rarely uh, users forget that. Another advantage is enhanced security. With single sign-on, you can enforce strong password policies. That means you can have complex rules like um, have 14 characters of password on, and password must contain a letter, a number, and a special character like that. And you can also implement multi-factor authentication to increase security of the user accounts. We'll discuss more about multi-factor authentication in the future videos. Single sign-on also simplifies user provisioning and deprovisioning. With identity and access management system, when a user joins or leaves an organization, their accounts can be provisioned or deprovisioned across multiple systems. This means that when a user joins, they gain access to all the applications that uh, they need access. And when they leave, their access is immediately revoked and they cannot access to any of the applications. Those are some of the uh, advantages of uh, single sign-on. Now let's discuss some drawbacks of single sign-on. The most significant disadvantage is single point of failure. Single point of failure means if the single sign-on system goes down, users will not be able to access any application, which causes inconvenience and some business disruption also sometimes. Another drawback is um, the complexity involved in setting up single sign-on system. Deploying identity and access management solutions can be very complex and there might be operational complexities um, during the setup and maintenance process. Additionally, compatibility limitations also a challenge. Not all applications support single sign-in and not all applications support uh, SAML, OAuth, OIDC, Federation protocols. So in those cases, right, um, application we cannot integrate applications with single sign-on, which makes um, users will need to have a separate ID and password in those cases, right? This is um, another disadvantage of um, single sign-on. I hope this video provided you some basic understanding of single sign-on, how it works, what are some advantages and disadvantages. If you like this video, please comment, share, and subscribe to Cyber Platter. And please um, stay tuned for more videos. Until then, take care. Goodbye.